Someone's time, we're not sure what time we should be on here. The sun came up at 6 local time, or before 6. And Dick Smith phoned in from Pitwater. He'd been around Glenn Davis. He's got a really nice museum, he said, up around Cape Tree. Can't see it. Too dark. Seems a bit worried. I'm standing on the good abseil point, straight over. I'll take that. Uh, 20 odd photos for a photo synth, see how it works. And that's the uh, Kwandong tree over there. That's where I took the series of photos for the photo synth there. It's an overhang down to there. And down here's the ladder climb. Living on the edge. Can't see. Him. Yeah, I can. Just, is it one just standing there? Just saw two hopping yeah. away. Yeah. Couple of roos. Oh, I can't reach them. Wee Bubby Rock Hole and Blow Hole. What a nice open plain. Yeah, feel the cool air. Nice cool air. It's interesting how they come off. Well, all the cavers have surveyed them all. Every hole they find, they add it to the database. And you can hear it. You hear it blowing, yeah. 
6 and 19. Mr. and Mrs. Lu Tung. Sleepy lizard. Lu Tung, sleepy lizard. Stumpy tail. Stumpy tail. And about 50 other names. Just driving down to Eucla, coming up to the golf course again. Back in Eucla, a couple more cyclists. Macca interviewed a, a cyclist who was going uh, in Sejuna I think she was coming west and we saw the Japanese cyclists haven't seen them yet they even got a horse here they have a pony ride and the police just rolled in oh there's the ocean great Australian bite down near the sand dunes near the telegraph station down there and the thought of walking down to the beach might do that yet have lunch down there somewhere but this is quite remarkable there's two cyclists there how's that? within sight of the ocean this is all the backyard of the the motel where we were last September when the, the lightning struck. When the lightning struck last year, it cut their power and our meat pies didn't get heated up and it poured. Well, you can't be the good old Brooks saddle. We've been around Australia, around the top, down the western coast, the headwinds. Quick phone home. We're going down the Utla Pass. Find a spot for lunch under a big shady tree. Not many trees actually. Oh, we just had an icy pole splice. Three dollars thirty or something. Three fifty. And here's the start of the the golf teeing off point for Madura. That was actually a rickety bridge across to the start. Here's the tee up here. Must be 30 degrees and it's only not summer yet. The whole thing's going to open next week. They were on, um, the telly came out, the getaway team came out the other day to film it. So you tee off here, somewhere, yeah. and you hit up Over to there. the, up there, across the spin effects to the green over there that's not far no, just beside the road in the sunlight on the windscreen of a car coming along the air highway towards Madura and this is a lookout at the top of the pass pubs down there the old hotels and Madura six mile south cave is out here. That's where the a photo of the VW in the cave was taken. Down there somewhere. Weren't many trees around so it's probably in there somewhere. Anthony's just 
topped up his tanks from his big tank. Uh, up just after sunrise at 5 a.m. WA time. And it was t-shirts and shorts and now it's 26 degrees at least with strong winds. We're just a little bit east of Cocklebitty and the Airbird Observatory um, turn off which goes down south from here. I'm just packing up to go across the Wee Bubby Cave. Marlel Elevan Cave and then maybe well, with a GPS, we found the track leading off from a, a rest area. And as usual, they say it's closed. And the roads into Cockabitty Cave. And a choice of three or four roads. And it's very flat and treeless. Stony. And stony. 1.54 to go. One and a half to go. Well, it should be nice and cool down there. My little birds, stay still, let me see your colours. That's the way, Dick, down in there. And all this has been washed away. And it's mightily rotten. Yeah, it must have been a fair bit of... A couple of survey marks down there. Pegs. Up through the gate. A lot of people have squeezed around past the, the gate there. And back up to the heat. Pretty hot up the top. Amazing to think all this filled up. This is all choked up here. There's all your fill, gravel and rock filled it up and then it's been washed away down in the cave again. It must be 30 degrees at least outside, just tearing along at 80 kilometres an hour in fourth gear with the aerial blowing sideways. It's right pretty up. windy up there. Several police cars have gone through Kaiguna. There's a huge mob of bikies, 180 of them, on their way over here. That's what the police were doing, going off over to intercept them, escort them into 
WA. And it's been windy as anything all day and the wind's coming like mad from the south instead of from the north. It changed completely. Just coming into Norseman. There's the sunset. And time for camping. Find, find a spot. Oh, we had dinner in the Great Western Motel restaurant last night, fish and chips and salad. And here we have the caravan park with their sprinklers on. They've got a lawn at the front, and watering this morning. Water from Perth, I think, from 500 k away along the pipeline. So there's no water restrictions. They water in summer, not in winter, it seems. Actually, the girl at the caravan park thinks they've got uh, boil water. One pub, one another pub doesn't work. Like the uh, clock tower here. And the four. Head frame in the mining. Been mining for a hundred years. The mining is going, but the clock's not. And that's the Norseman Hotel. The other one down here is the Railway Hotel. This is actually closed, I think. So it's open. Well, that's Norseman, a horse. He found the, the gold nugget, got stuck in his hoof up on the, the first reef that was found here in the 1890s. A few empty blocks of land around, and little, lots of little mining houses. We're just going to cruise up here past the, the tailing dump up behind the town to the east of the town. Oh, well, it's down to 1,800 feet, and there's all the, it's all the vents, there's yeah. primary and the, um, vents and roots. shafts, and, a, and then there's a, a, a road up here that you can spiral up and out. They're thinking maybe to um, 
move the town and turn it into an open cut. If the economics work. 960,000 litres a year. 2.7 megawatts. 2.7 gigawatts. Wow. One thousand ounces of the woodlands walk. The entrance to the, the tunnel, the decline where the trucks go up and down, bring the ore body out. And they spiral down, down 100 meters, 400 meters. And they're drilling down to get to another whole body, which is a hundred meters down. Well, we're following a reef down, aren't they? Yeah, following a reef which dips off to the southeast at 45 degrees. And all the trucks have probably gone home now. Someone driving along a dirt road in the distance. Maybe that's the road. Might be just a crusher or something. Driving that's along. Not driving. Oh, that's... And that's the Lake Cowan, which we did wheelies on in the Beetle in '64. That extends up to Luigi Nulsa. And drive up there tomorrow, perhaps to. Ambalba. This is Beacon Hill. And there's two, a couple of claims on the same day. That's the noise we can hear all night from the crushes. A head of a mine shaft down there in the trees going through here. 